So, good morning again. So, today my talk will be completely different, of course, than yesterday. And uh, we'll focus on the BF, so, uh, as I said, it was said, so the behavior of detergent around membrane proteins because, uh, as you know, this component is very important when we want to crystallize protein, membrane proteins. So, this work was done in my lab by Vincent Chapel, essentially, by Anna Kilberg, Sandrine Magnard, and Frédéric Delolme. So we are interesting because in, to, to, to the problem because we are trying to crystallize these three proteins, uh, BMRA, BCRP, and CTR1. Uh, but beyond that, uh, the, 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 life and the, the domain of membrane protein is very challenging because among the pharmaceutical targets which have been identified so far, so it was in 2006 here, about 300, 60 percent are membrane protein, and this protein account for 8,000 of the uh, proteomes in human. And there is a big uh, lack in, in structural information uh, for this protein, as shown here, because they account for 25, 30% of the, of the proteomes, but only 1% of the high resolution structure. And this ratio is not increasing uh, like here, but decreasing. Uh, this last year, in 2.7. So it's we we need very uh, a new method, a new strategies to to increase the structural information for this protein, which are very really important. The requirements for structure-based approaches are to have a netting protein folding, of course, stability with time for the crystals, and free day structure identical or close to the active one. And this is far to be obtained with membrane protein. And this is due to different problems here of production, of course, extraction and stabilization, so the, the type of detergents. For that, we have developed in the past different uh, compounds, which are now used by the, the company we have set, uh, created. And we have, for a crystallization step, which is also very critical, a very good equipment now, especially, especially a, a, a room at four degrees and equipped with, with a very good equipment. And the last problem which, which remains is to have a better control to the, to the detergent used in these steps. What, what is occurring when you use a detergent? In fact, uh, these detergent, detergent are amphiphilic uh, compounds with partition into the membrane in which the, protein, the membrane protein is embedded and replace the increase in concentration, replace the lipids to get this type of complex of with the protein, membrane protein, and are surrounded by pure micelles or mixed micelles. But in these states, detergents are mo much more uh, dynamically exchangeable uh, with the micelles than the lipids, making that it is often observed that either a partial dissociation, uh, as shown here, or a slight change in the topology of the protein. And this makes that the protein we have crystallized is not exactly the, the, the right one. For example, in ABC transporters, when you use detergent, you lose 99% of the ATPase activity. So making that all the structure you have seen yesterday have, have something wrong somewhere. To illustrate also the importance of detergent, my colleague Eva Peberula at Grenoble has shown with uh, the ADP ATP carrier when she is, was trying to crystallize it that the amount of the, 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 the concentration of detergent is very important. She used for that the APO, which is an amyoxide detergent, and for that experiment, a radioactive one, which unfortunately is not available uh, commercially. And she showed that uh, reducing the amount of detergent uh, allowed, her, allowed them to get crystals and improve uh, uh, their quality. So it is very important. The, the gold standard method to quantify a bound detergent to the membrane protein is, uh, is one set up by my colleague Marc Lemaire at Saclay, in which, so set up with this protein, uh, CERCA, which is a calcium transporting ATPase made of uh, 10 transmembrane span. Uh, which in which so the protein is extracted with with maltoside uh, and uh, so which is radioactive in that case uh, and after two uh, size exclusion chromatography the amount of protein is quantified and the amount of detergent quantified thanks to the radioactivity 
But again, this is only possible because the detergent is radioactive and also that one is not uh, radioactively uh, commercially available. There is also some methods to, do, to quantify detergent. For those, we have a sugar moiety to use to, to quantify this sugar part, but it is absolutely not sensitive. FTR, uh, high performance uh, thin layer chromatography, or liquid chromatography coupled to mass spectrometry, and also the last, the most recent one, but the last, the most costly of two, the size explosion chromatography coupled with uh, multi angle laser. laser light scattering uh, signals, but all these methods are uh, difficult to handle, uh, costly, uh, they cannot be used in case of a detergent mixture and so on. So we need, we need to, to, for our experiments, to have a method which is, uh, can be used uh, routinely each day and not expensive and precise. So I thought about uh, simply this method of matrical assisted laser, uh, laser, laser desorption ionization mass spectrometry called MALDITOF, which is uh, commonly used by chemists to quantify their compounds, in which uh, uh, so the biological compounds which contain detergent is mixed with a standard, a standard made of deter deteriorated detergent for those for the, for those the, this um, uh, species exist. And with a matrix, this option matrix, and the, this mixture is submitted to a, a laser shot, and the compounds are dissolved here. For example, shown there with the phosphorine 12 ever deteriorated or protonated. But the major drawback of this technique is that uh, from one experiment to another, for example, shown in these four experiments, the, the, the desorption, the laser desorption is not constant. And for example, the, the amount of uh, deteriorated phosphorine here is not, uh, so desorbate is not the same here, 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 or there, while the same amount was put on the spot. But in fact, we discovered, so it, this is also shown with this duplicate experiment where the, the, the amount of desorbed, uh, phosco deteriorated phosphorine is not the same, but we discovered it, it is proportional to the other compound added in the, in the spot. Phosphorine, uh, phosphorine, protonated phosphorine, making that in fact the, rate, the, the, the proportionality between both compounds complete, was completely linear. And this was a very good result, but we tested with other results, with other detergents, so two other deteriorated detergents, the dolecyl maltoside and beta glucoside, for which we get also a very good linearity. And for the others, for, for which the deteriorated form is not uh, uh, available, for example, the, um, the LMNG, so Loril uh, maltose neopentyl glycol, uh, the detergent recently uh, set up, we use a decil form. Of the, we, for our detergent, for example, we use a uh, Loril, form to, Loril, Loril form to quantify the decil form. For, uh, for the shafts, we use Shepso, and for the collate, we use Doxycolate. And in each case, so you see the detergents, which are rather different, we got a very good linearity in the, in the quantification. So with all these experiments, it seems that the method should work in, in, in every case, and it is a very good result, in fact. We, uh, test the detection limit sensitivity of the, of the method by using the phosphorine 12 and the maltoside, and we, uh, we, we, you can see that we, we can go to 2,000, uh, less than 1 to 100 percent of the phosphorine 12 and 1 to 1,000 for the dolicyl maltoside, uh, so it's very good. And we also test with a mixture of detergent here, uh, beta glucoside and dolicyl maltoside, and in, in both cases we could estimate precisely each compound. <coughs> whatever the presence of the other. Well, let's keep that one. The last, uh, last uh, assay was to compare with the gold standard method of Mark Lemaire, and we, uh, and Mark for us prepared this, uh, so his favorite pro pro protein, we ever pre prepared with the radioactive compound, dolicyl maltoside, or the unlabeled one. And he, he estimated, he quantified the detergent using his method and send us this compound, that, this uh, complex that we, in which we estimated the, 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 the decimaltoside amount. And you can see the, 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 the result was well. We are very good, we estimated exactly the same thing. So with this uh, 
new game uh, in hand. We play a lot of things with a lot of uh, experiments. For example, this uh, size exclusion chromatography of BMRA, our favorite protein, purified in phoscholine 12, the lysine maltoside or lauryl maltose neopentine glycol. And this time, we, so we can uh, estimate and uh, localize the, the free micelle here, here or there here. Uh, in that case, you can see that the, the, the micelle of this OMNG is very high, uh, 400 uh, kilodalton, and also estimate and quantify the bound detergent here. But we found to be around 50, 500 for the phoscholine 12, <coughs> 400 for the decid maltoside, and 160 for the LMNG. So this is somewhere correlated with the size of the detergent. So we did that with other proteins uh, and of different shapes, an efflux uh, protein system, uh, system protein, uh, uh, ATP, ADP exchanger, a GPCR, and we got in, in, every, in each cases and each detergent very precise, precise amounts. Having these amounts in, in hands, uh, we are theoretically uh, able to, uh, to 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 have a model of this of the, the shape of the well, not the shape the, the the size of the, cor the corona that the detergent makes around the membrane region of the protein. Having well, assuming that it is something like that, we have all the parameters in fact to measure that. Uh, having the, the the volume of the each 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 detergent, for example, here the the and the number of detergent, and this size. So we did that with uh, BMRA and different detergents, showing that uh, we are surprised to observe that the the the, the, the radius of the detergent belt was different, uh, in depending on the detergent. So, for example, 222, uh, two, sorry, 227 two, angstrom for the dolicyl maltoside, 24 for the 25 for the phoscholine 12, 23 for the LMNG, which is bigger but lower amount, and uh, in this last experiment, in which there is 200 dolicyl maltoside and 100 collate, we have a radius which is much smaller, 21 angstrom. So this is a very important result because uh, it is known that reducing the, the size of the detergent increases the contact between protein in the crystals and uh, allows to, prom to, to, to get it. We have also an intriguing uh, observation uh, but uh, when we concentrate, in, typically we concentrate a sample before for example, a size exclusion chromatography like that, coming from uh, an affinity chromatography. And depending on the experiments, we have done a lot with BMRA, uh, sometimes we observe that we have an accumulation of detergent in a, in a concentrated pool after, after trifiltration. This is shown there in two experiments, one in, uh, in, uh, with the, the, in blue here, uh, and without, and in the, with this uh, blue also, but without, uh, uh, sorry, uh, without protein. So we can see a difference in uh, the amount of det free detergent in the mice cell. And this was not expected at all. And again, it's very important because as uh, Eva Pepe has shown, if you have too much detergent, you cannot crystallize efficiently your protein. So we look at this problem and uh, uh, did different, different experiments using this time soluble proteins or even, or even, um, even uh, uh, a non-protein polymer, dextran. And using different concentrations of these compounds, we observe that in fact, how many times I have more? Two minutes? Three minutes? We observe that so in each time the, the, the maltoside increase proportionally with the amount of polymer. So again, this is rather intriguing because uh, <coughs> even if this polymer is not a membrane protein, we increase the amount of, of detergent. And looking at the literature, we discovered that this is typical of a non-Newtonian liquid, in which so the, the, the viscosity increase uh, when the, this type of liquid is submitted to a mechanical stresses, for example here, uh, centrifuge strength. And to, to verify that, we did this last experiment where we simply changed the speed at which the, the centrifuge ultrafiltration is, is, is carried out. 
uh, here, like the customer proposes 5000G, and there at 500G. And you can, cons you can see that the difference in amount of the decimatoside is very important. So it did. It seems that this, this uh, phenomenon is due to an anti-tixotropic effect of the solution, uh, typically that we have. So simply the, the, the detergent in, and the macromolecule make, uh, generate a phase, gel phase, which retains so the detergent at the top of the concentrator. And we have this type of compound for uh, behavior with, for example, the ketchup or the mayonnaise. It's, so I have finished it, and I would like to thank you again for your attention and mention these two new, two new sponsors for our research. So thank you. Well, we have time for a few questions. So maybe I'll start. Um, when, you, when, you, when you do your studies, one of the problems that there's been with GPCRs, for example, and detergents mm -hmm. is that over time, even keeping them at low temperatures, at four degrees, let's say, they lose their biological activity. So to what extent can you monitor the integrity of the protein in these new detergents um, by, by their biological function? By, by, for example, in the case of our abyss transporter, that is also the case for the GPCR, for GPCR, people measure the, the, the binding of, uh, of the of the ligands, uh, yeah. the ligands, and usually they, con they, they observe a reduce, a reduce uh, affinity. Right. Let's say ten yes. times, one hundred times. In our case, the ATPs activity is very sensitive. For example, if you uh, solubilize with the acetaldehyde, the trans uh, you lose the ATPs activity because the two parts of the protein open, and the ATP the ATP cannot uh, be longer uh, uh, idolized. So this is a real problem, in fact. Right. 